Hello and welcome to another edition of La Rats. My name is Andy Walker. I'm Sean Carruthers. And this is a show where we demystify technology, you know, your computers, your gadgets, and of course occasionally your software when it gets updated. Yes, sir. And a big uh, notable update last week from Apple. Yes, last week as we're taping this uh, was iTunes, iTunes 10. iTunes 10, right. With Bing! Would you say this is the kind of the biggest update for iTunes in a while? It is one of the strangest updates in a while, I think. It's, they've done a lot of big updates over the years, like introducing uh, you know, software into it, introducing rentals and you know, purchases of movies and whatnot. So they've done a lot of big updates. This one is interesting because of Ping, which adds a bit of a social element to it, which we'll go into in greater detail. Ping! Ping! All right, a little Monty Python reference there. It's the machine that goes ping. ping! Very good, okay, good. All right, so we're gonna delve into iTunes 10 today on the show. Uh, look at this thing, ping! And, uh, uh, and kind of give you sort of the, the what-so about uh, uh, the new features and whether you should uh, be bothering with it or not. That's today on Lab Rats. Well, welcome back to Lab Rats. Before we get started, I want to tell you really quickly about Hover.com. It's one of our favorite places to register your web domains. Uh, what I love about Hover.com, Sean, is um, that they have this new policy called No Hold Customer Service. I don't understand how that's even possible. Every time I call customer service, I get, get put, on put on hold. hold. Yeah, exactly. Now, it's one of the things they've really been working out really hard. So if you have a problem with your domain, you've registered, or you email, if you've hosted your email there, um, and you want to talk to them, mm -hmm. you, know, you, you dial that number, and they pick up the phone. There is no music. There's no that's wait crazy. times will be. Isn't it crazy? That's so crazy. Really differentiating themselves, and I'm really impressed. That's hover.com. If you want to try them out, here's a coupon for 10% off. Um, so you can get your domains for cheaper and, uh, and really sort of have a great customer service experience. So check that out. Great. .com. And don't be put on hold. Don't be put on hold. All right. So let's get on with iTunes 10. Yes, sir. So uh, where to start? Let's start with, I guess, perhaps what, is, what are the cr key critical pieces that are new that we should sort of know about? All right. Well, the, the first big one that uh, people are going to notice is it has a new logo. You'll notice looking at the logo now that it's gotten rid of the CD that was in the logo for oh, the wow. last number of revs. Uh, they're sort of embracing the new digital age and uh, you know, getting rid of the CD component. I guess the yeah, kind of CDs and DVDs are really kind of gone. Well, not really. They're, they're still out there. They but feel like they're fading they're, they're, into they're history. They're fading into history because a lot of people are getting their things through iTunes in a completely digital manner. So yeah. uh, there's a whole growing number of people out there that have never bought music in physical form. They're just buying it or stealing it online and putting it into their iTunes program and just streaming it straight from there. It's all bits now. That would make sense. So yeah. Some people are still saying that the logo kind of stinks because iTunes does so much more than just music. It's, music, it's yeah. a big musical note here, as you can see, and it does movies, it does apps, and all that other stuff. Why are they going to rename it at some point? They might. Yeah. iTunes is sort of a brand. I think they should have done that a couple of uh, versions, versions back. Versions ago, yeah. But um, I, I think we maybe we're stuck with iTunes, even though it's doing all these other things that aren't necessarily music related. Maybe they'll just call it Ping. Possibly. Maybe they'll change it to Ping. We'll get to that we'll in a minute. get to that in a minute. Okay, good. So there's apparently this other new thing called um, Hybrid View. Do you, you want to take us through a tour, or how do you want to? Yeah, we'll, we'll do this uh, in, in bits and pieces. Okay. So you call them out, I'll show them to you. All right, you got so it. So Hybrid View is uh, a new way of viewing what you have in your library. So as you can see in my library right here right now, I'm using one of the old view, the list view. You can see it's just a great big long list. Yeah. And uh, as before, we've got uh, an icon view where you can look at uh, the various things that are in here using the album covers. And you also have screen flow where you can just scroll through them really, really quickly, you know, uh, looking at the covers. And then below you have the, uh, the list again, like yes. you have before. Sure. So the new hybrid view, they, they had this brainwave that said, well, you know, in the regular list view, you've got just a long list and it's repeating a lot of information over and over again. The album title, album title, album title. So you got like 10, 12, 15 things that belong to the same album. It just repeats the name of the album 15 times. Well, mm -hmm. Hybrid View gets rid of that uh, element of it and replaces it with picture of the album. And so you've got running down the side, you've got the uh, name of the album, you've got the name of the artist, you've got the album cover art. Mm -hmm. And that is removed from, well, largely removed from the side here. So you still have the name of the artist, so you can sort by that. But it does remove a lot of the duplicate information. Right, right. So it's a bit cleaner, more streamlined, and you can scroll down very quickly and recognize the album cover that you're looking for very quickly without having to scroll down looking through a long list and going cross-eyed looking for yeah. the text. Now, now, is that for. just for, for the music, or is it for, for you know, shows and movies as well? 
in, well, the TV shows, uh, it does have a hybrid view as well. I don't have enough in here to, to, demonstrate. to show it, but yeah, it does have hybrid view for, for these other things. Right now, I've got mostly music on this, but it does yeah. list the hybrid view for all of these different views. Good stuff. And then there's something about a vertical icon placement? Or yeah, now this is an interesting bit of uh, UI design, and we're not 100% sure if this is something that's going to catch on all across the, uh, the Apple universe. But if you'll notice, up in the top left-hand corner, you have the... Uh, the red, the yellow, and the green button, and usually those are side by side, next to each other. Yeah. And in this version of iTunes, they're stacked on top of each other, much like a stoplight, right on the top. Oh, yeah, yeah. So again, you know, red will uh, get rid of it, yellow will uh, minimize, and green will, uh, will maximize the, the window. So, you, so that's a real sea change for them, like to change up the UI. Do you think they're just testing it to see if that works, or maybe a future version it, of uh, the Mac OS? It may be a test. It may just be because, uh, now here's the thing, is trying to do this all across the Mac OS, I think would be a bit difficult, because there's a lot of programs that have just a very thin bar along the top that where they have the name of the, the program. It works here because we have a full wide strip along there with the player controls. We've got the uh, the little LCD listing that shows what's playing and the, the view modes and the search window. So it's, it's already a tall thing. So you can stack them in, in that kind of mode. Mm -hmm. So maybe it'd be an optional thing. Stack them if you want or put them side by side. I got it. Okay, cool. So there you go. Now, big changes, of course, with, along with uh, the announcement last week for uh, iTunes 10, also a new Apple TV, mm -hmm. which we should probably mention because for the next point, you, know, you, could, al you could always buy or rent a movie mm -hmm. and you could buy TV. Now, you can rent TV, right? You can rent TV as well. And that's largely, I believe, because of the Apple TV, as you mentioned. The new version of the Apple TV removes the hard drive from on board. So instead of purchasing it and p dumping it on that hard drive, you're basically streaming it live over the internet. Right. So you can stream from your, your iTunes. You can stream from iTunes or your iTunes installations on your other computers. Or you can stream from uh, directly from Apple to get these things. Right. But without a hard drive space, you can't purchase them. Uh, they won't be sticking around on your box. You just have to be streaming them over and over again. Right. So, and I guess they must have looked at this and said, okay, so most people are purchasing these TV shows for two ninety nine or one ninety nine or whatever and watching them once. Yeah. So why not rent them? Because they're not going to watch most of this stuff again. Uh, and if you want to, to buy it, then I suppose you'll buy the Blu-ray DVDs at the end of the season or something like that. Yeah, maybe, maybe. Yeah. Now, there's a bit of a debate as to whether or not this is going to continue. There's only two places signed up right now, and that's uh, ABC and Fox mm -hmm. for, for rentals, um, which isn't the entire run of uh, content providers they have on the site. So you never know. They may just be doing this strictly for Apple TV, introducing rentals in, into the, uh, the iTunes store is new, definitely, uh, on that. And then we'll see how many other uh, uh, content providers actually sign up for this as well. Right. And like before, you can, well, like with movies, you have 48 hours to watch the show. Right. And 30 days from the time that you buy it to initiate the, the first play. Right. So the authentication is just basically done at the iTunes, or at Apple.com, rather right. than on your, your box. On your box itself. And just, it doesn't sit there waiting for you to play. It just right. holds the memory that you've bought that. Right. So. Now, another uh, key feature, I guess, this is, is a, something called AirTunes. Tell me about that. They've rebranded re it. So they, AirPlay allows you to move things around your, your uh, home network. So you've got an iPad. You've got your, your machine iPhone. at uh, the desktop. Yeah. You've got uh, your Apple TV now. And you've got your notebooks. You've got your iPhone. All these things you can now share around the network with this, this right. new function. Right. And so, so it's, just it's, been basi re -branded. it's basically a rebrand of something they already had. Okay. All right, let's move on because uh, they've now iTunes 10 also introduces a brand new sort of social media piece. Ping, ping, ping. <laughs> okay, and so the, the purpose of ping. This is not a Twitter replacement, not a Facebook replacement. No, it is not these things. Uh, but they started thinking about this because the people at Apple were looking at how people use social media, and a lot of traffic on Twitter and Facebook was about music and people sharing what they liked and telling, I'm playing this right now and I'm enjoying it. Yeah. Um, so there was a lot of that going on on social media. And the iTunes store is already one of the biggest installed user bases around For out music. there. music. Millions and millions of people already yeah. out there. Yeah, yeah. So, and these people are all into music. So they thought, well, let's make it easy for them to share what they're purchasing, what they're enjoying right. with, with their other friends. Yeah. Now, that's, that's the goal. I have to say, when I, was, when I first logged into it this weekend, I was uh, a bit disappointed. It, it seemed to be a bit lackluster initially. Mm -hmm. But you yeah. think it has great promise? It, it has promise. The biggest problem that uh, we have with Ping at this point is nobody knows how to get their friends on here. Now, at the very beginning, they had Facebook Connect set up on this that you could actually 
click Facebook Connect, and it would go and find your other friends on Facebook that already had this set up. Mm. That disappeared fairly quickly. Really? Apparently, they, uh, they talked to uh, Facebook about getting this interaction between the two sites. And uh, at the end, Steve Jobs said, no, the terms that Facebook wanted were just too onerous. That was the word he used, onerous. onerous. And uh, they, they yanked He's Mr. Onerous, there. though. He is Mr. Onerous in, in some ways. But it takes one to know one. What can I say? Anyways, so what we're left with when they took that out, so I, I noticed a few people added me almost instantly at the beginning when Facebook Connect was still in there. After yeah. that, it sort of slowed to a real trickle because people have to now actually go looking for you or see some of their friends already on there have connected to The you. discovery piece is not ideal the yet. The discovery piece is very bad, in yeah. fact, at this point. Right. And you have to know not only who the person is you're looking for, but you have to know if they're using a different name on iTunes. So yeah. some people may have set up their iTunes under a, a pseudonym or a fake name or whatever. And then that means that you can't find them. When, when you're doing this, unless they come find you first. So Apple not a threat to Facebook or Twitter anytime soon? Not anytime soon. I mean, they have a larger uh, installed user base on those networks anyhow. Yeah. Uh, so, I mean, Ping won't threaten that, but <clears throat> it, it is kind of nice for what it is. They just need to get this user discovery process. Uh, one yeah. of the things I quite liked about it is you can actually follow um, performers as well, right. bands and, and singers yeah. and songwriters and stuff like that. And that was the other problem out of the, uh, out of the gate with this is that uh, there weren't that many bands set up. So on, on launch day, and I, this is really a, a first week, first month problem, I think, for it. Now, I've, I've talked to our friend Jay Goldman over at uh, Status Update, and he says it's the empty restaurant syndrome. You don't want to go and, and see. You have to have it populated right out, off the bat for people to really take to it. So a lot of people are showing up here and saying, oh, there's nothing there. And I mean, the, the, the artists, there were like 14 artists that you could find the first day. Mm -hmm. You would type in the name of an artist you wanted, not there. Right. So if, if you're going there looking for U2, you're fine. But if you're looking for something a little bit off the beaten track, or even stuff that wasn't necessarily off the beaten track, like, like David Bowie or the Beatles or something like that, well, Unfair because the Beatles aren't in the iTunes store. Yeah. But if you wanted to find something that was there, but the artist hadn't set up a profile yet, yeah. you're out of luck. Oh, right, 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 right. So that's slowly going to start trickling Lots in. Of work. Now we've noticed uh, recent activity. Other people are starting to fire or to uh, to connect to their favorite artists, and they're right. starting to connect to um, other friends. So it's growing a lot slower than it probably should. Right. Got it. Speaking of Jay Goldman, he's going to do a little thing on this. Is he's he's going to have a yeah. shoot coming up, and this is all all of social media. This is too. this is his thing right now. So yeah. doing everything about social media. So we're going to get his full take on this. Good stuff. All right. Well, let's take a break. Uh, don't forget, zip on over to uh, check out uh, Jay's show status update, so you can catch that uh, whole take on Ping. Uh, but uh, in the meantime, we're, we're going to take a break, and when we come back, we've got clip of the week as well as your pictures. All right, well, before we get to our clip of the week and, and picture time, actually, it's going to be video time this week, uh, I just want final thoughts around uh, iTunes 10. You, uh, you had a, a kind of a couple of thoughts around that. Yeah, a couple of things here. So we, we talked about kind of what it is, follow your friends. So get, get information about what your friends are l listening to. Get information about what your favorite artists are doing. Get behind the scenes videos and uh, tour information, concert information, that sort of thing. So it, it's adding that aspect to it. But you can also comment on all these things. So for example, uh, I can see that Paul started following someone named Steven, and I can add a comment to that saying, I don't know who this is, but I approve. And then post the comment, and that'll appear uh, on that. And now Steven's probably wondering who the heck I am. Right. But it, it has this sort of unfiltered ability to just comment back and forth on anything you see that uh, you, uh, that you uh, get linked to through your friends or your favorite artists. Okay. So that's nice. And, the one thing I really don't like about this at this point, and I think there's, there's a lot of things that will probably be addressed in future revisions of it. The one thing I really don't like is management of what's going on. So in order to find out if anyone has addressed you directly at this point, you literally have to scroll down through every single post that everyone has made, everything that everyone has liked and all of that. Mm -hmm. So if there's comments, that is, there's not an easy control panel like in Twitter or in Facebook where it alerts you that says, hey, someone's trying to get your attention. So how would, so. You, how would you follow somebody? How you follow is you would uh, go up to people uh, on the top right hand corner and uh, you would actually search for their name uh, or find someone that already has uh, followers and, and find them that way. So if I wanted to find Amber Mac, for example, I would type in Amber Mac in this box and right now your search had no results. Obviously Amber's not on board yet and this is part me? of the problem. So 
What How about, about you? Yeah. Let's, let's, let's see if you're in there. Are you there? Did you, did you sign up for this? I think I turned it on. Andy Walker, are you in Boston? Nope. Are you in United Kingdom? Nope, that's the footballer. Uh, are you in Kalamazoo, Michigan? Nope. Okay, I guess I have to turn that on. Uh, there's a second page here. So anyways, a again, finding people, again, is a little bit hard, again, because I'm probably connected to some people that you might be connected to. Yeah. I should be search, you should be come, You yeah. should come up to the top. And, and there's a couple things. That it, the interface, it's a great idea, and I think it might take off, but there's a little bit of refining to be done under pressure of millions of users on this. I got it. So. Thank you, Sean. That's good. All right, so let's uh, take a couple minutes to uh, have a look at a, uh, one of the clips from butterscotch.com. Of course, you may know we do a series called 60 Second App, which are uh, iPhone and Android apps. Our lovely uh, producer, uh, Paul, has uh, done one on Shazam, which is like a music kind of detection uh, software. Uh, Isn't that on like the a iPhone. comic book thing as well? Shazam. Shazam. All right, so let's have a quick look at that. And when we come back, actually, I was going to say picture time, but video time. Video time. Welcome to On Deck. I'm Matt Harris. Hi, I'm Jay Goldman. Welcome to the A-List. Hi, welcome to Miss Download. If you hear a song you like, but you don't know the name of, Shazam is the app for you. It records a small snippet of the song, sends it to the Shazam database, where it sonically compares it to over 8 million songs that they have on record. If a match is found, they'll let you know what it is. Now this on its own is very cool, however the program goes the extra mile these days. In addition to tagging the song, you'll also have the ability to find tour information on demand, an album review, biography, discography, access to YouTube clips, Facebook integration, map locations, which geotags where in the world you last were when you heard the song, and the ability to buy it off iTunes. So to see more uh, 60 second apps, and of course the full version of that, actually we showed you 30 seconds, so you want to see the whole 60, zip on over to butterscotch.com, look up 60 second app, and uh, you can check that out as well as dozens and dozens more. I think we have 40 or 50 or 60 up there by now. If we showed 30 seconds of the 60 second app, why didn't we just show the whole thing? Really? Well, you know, these are busy people. I guess so. We just showed the best bit of it, I guess. Plus, if we showed everything, then they'd have no reason to go find out what Paul's ultimate conclusions were. That's true. I liked it. He liked it. Oh, he you gave it, it away. Oh. Ah, come on. All right, so let's uh, zip on over now. We've got, uh, it's time for picture time, or should I say video it is time? Video time. You can send your pictures to us, of course, and yes. uh, we love to see them, but occasionally you send us a video, and we like that. Yeah, this was a, a recommendation from our friend Quinn in Calgary, oh, yeah. and he sent us photographs before, and this time he sent us a link to some of his videos. Uh -huh. And uh, he's on Yahoo, and this is one of the video, or uh, sorry, it's on YouTube. YouTube, yeah. And this is one of the videos that he has. Uh, Done. He actually taped one of these videos at a, a kiosk in uh, London Drugs, which is a drugstore out in Western Canada. Yeah. And uh, obviously his friend uh, was uh, in the background as well and was uh, trying to get a bit of the, uh, the action here as well. So. <laughs> well, it looks good. He's actually a very, very good uh, presenter. I love his, uh, his stuff. Yeah, so Lots of material on there. Yeah, so th this one is a little bit of fun. This is kind of like one of our outtakes or our bloopers. Um, but Quinn also has a whole pile of tech-related uh, content. He shows how to sw swap out a video card, and uh, he shows what happens when you smash a uh, CPU against the curb and what's inside <laughs> it. So it's, it's very fun, a lot of this stuff. So. And this one's entitled, How to Get Your Friend Off of the Camera So You Can Really Do Something Proper. Right. That's so, good. And if you want to see his stuff, it's at BigTechBoy26. That's his handle on YouTube. BigTechBoy26. So. BigTechBoy26. On YouTube.com. There are 25 other Big Tech Boys. Huh? Or not. I guess maybe not. Right, but I got to know what you're saying. All right, uh, Quinn is 12 years old, 13 years old. Something like somewhere that. Somewhere in there, so anyway. Okay, uh, so you can send your pictures to us at... Big Tech Boys, number 27 through 1008 at yahoo.facebook.labrats.tv. <laughs> yeah, or uh, if you really want it to get to us. Yeah, that wouldn't get anywhere, <laughs> I don't think. <laughs> Uh, how that. about feedback at labrats.tv? Yeah, feedback at labrats.tv. Send on over. You can send your pictures. You can send your videos. You can send us a link to a video on YouTube. Um, you can do a parody of him or me or both, you know. One of those things, anyway. Something. Yeah. Whatever works. Right. Don't forget to zip on over to hover.com and uh, use this uh, coupon here. There's, uh, they have their no, no wait uh, customer service, which we really love. You should check it out as well. And uh, any final thoughts, Mr. Crothers? Ping. I'm gonna I'm gonna make sure that uh, we're connected and, uh, and and the gang out there you guys should look us up too and see if you can add us as your friends and we'll add you back definitely we want to see what kind of uh, tunes you like too and you can see him making fun of my music as well yeah. and you can see all of my 80s collection <laughs> very exciting 
Uh, maybe that's why I should see uh, who's following Duran Duran. I'll find you yeah, that I'll way. be the number one fan. All right. Well, thanks for tuning in this week. It'd be foolish for us to be messing around with iTunes here if you weren't out there with a big music collection. My name's Andy Walker. Ping! He's Sean Carruthers. We'll see you next time. Are you ready? Gotta do it my way, or no way at all. Ah, I see you have the machine that goes bing!